Hi there, this is San Diego magician Tom Interval. Welcome to another Interval of Magic. Today I would like to show you a classic easy trick. If you are an experienced magician, you will know this. However, for everybody else, this is a really cool way to make a coin disappear. And you use a salt shaker for cover. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. One thing magicians are really well known for is breaking the laws of physics, doing the impossible. For example, magicians make objects disappear all the time. Disappear, demolecularize, dematerialize, vanish, whatever your favorite synonym is. There's no exception with an object like a coin. Now you can hear it is a solid coin. I could cover the coin and make it disappear, but I want to use another solid object that has some sound when bumped up against the coin. So I'm going to cover the coin and in three seconds it's going to disappear. I'm going to have you keep your eye on that coin in three seconds, it's going to disappear. Uh, in fact, you know what? I want to use a little bit of cover because secrets are really, really important to most magicians, including me. So I really don't want you to see the secret. We need to cover it up, but I do want you to hear something happening just before the coin disappears in three seconds. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay, this is a little embarrassing. So the coin didn't disappear. Um, I think I know I didn't actually wave hard enough, perhaps. Let's try it. Let's try it again. Three seconds, the coin will disappear. It's a little embarrassing, but one, two, three. There, I waved harder. Did it work? I think it might have worked this time. Ah, yeah, I don't think it worked. Well, here's the problem. I think you're supposed to blow on the coin, so watch. Oh, wait a second. I don't think the coin is supposed to vanish. I think the coin is supposed to go through the table. Let's try this again. Oh, wait, no, wait, that's not it. It's been a while since I performed this. It's not the coin that's supposed to go through the table. It's the salt shaker, of course. Okay, here's the explanation. So again, if you're a beginning magician, you may not know how this is done. There are uh, two parts to this. Actually, there are several parts. But there's a little bit of psychology behind some of this magic, as well as some physical actions you'll have to use, including some physical misdirection. So it's called the vanishing salt shaker, although you don't tell people that this is going to disappear. Um, and the salt shaker doesn't have to vanish. It could actually go through the table. Okay, And I'll, I'll explain how that's done if you don't already know how it's done. So what you want to do is, first you explain that magicians can do the impossible to make objects disappear, etc., including this coin. And you bring all the attention to the coin. You want all the attention on the coin. That's part of the psychology. Okay. Then you introduce the salt shaker. Now, if you're, at a, if you're out at dinner, of course, right now you might not be out at dinner, but if you're out at dinner um, and the salt shaker happens to be there, just sort of say, Let's, what can we use? Oh, yeah, we can use the salt shaker, whatever. Something that makes a noise when hit upon the coin like that. Then you uh, grab a couple napkins and say, now look, I want to preserve the secret. So what you do is you mold the napkin onto the salt shaker like this. All right. And you can see when I say mold, you shape it around there. So it, like that. And you, when you pick up the salt shaker like that, um, obviously it's there, so it looks like it's there, but you want to mold it around there so when the napkin is picked up without the salt shaker, it still kind of looks like the salt shaker is there. All right. Now, why would I do that? Well, in this trick, you're going to learn a technique magicians use a lot. And, <clears throat> excuse me, it's called lapping, L-A-P-P-I-N-G. Lap or lapping. It's used as a verb here. So, I'm going to lap the salt shaker, which means I'm going to secretly drop it into my lap. Now, in order to do that without anybody seeing, what you need to do is misdirect their attention a little bit. So 
first of all, the, mis the built-in misdirection is you're having them focus on the coin, so they expect something to happen to the coin and not the salt shaker. So that's psychology point number two. I'm sorry, number one. Psychology point number two is, each time I fail and the coin doesn't disappear, and you really pretend that it doesn't work, I lift this up and I rest my hand back here. I do that a total of three times. First time it fails. Second time it fails. Well, actually, I do that twice before the magic happens. Now, the second time I'm back here, they're used to seeing me go back and forth. So you're conditioning the audience to go back and forth, or to see you go back and forth. Therefore, it draws less suspicion when you do the secret move, which is dropping the salt shaker into your lap. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, first time, it fails. And you hit it up there a couple times. Second time, it fails. You got them used to seeing you do this two times. Oh man, I don't know what, what's happening. I don't know how, what's going on here. Oh, I think, and now the second time, what's happening again? I'm going to let the salt shaker drop into my lap. But before I do, I want you to know the positioning of your fingers. And I'll have some close-ups with this as well. When you come back, every time you come back to your lap, I'm sorry, to the edge of the table, basically, you're resting this part of your hand on the table as far back as you possibly can get without being off the table. In doing so, the salt shaker will have a clear path to your lap. I also want to mention that in order for the salt shaker to fall in your lap without falling to the floor, you need to press your legs together under the table. So after your legs are together and you do this, and it's far enough back where the salt shaker won't hit the table on the way down. You let go of the salt shaker. Now, if you look really closely, you'll see, look really closely here, you'll see it go. But if you're misdirecting people enough, they won't see that, okay? Because you're directing all their attention here. Now, on video, it's a lot harder. It's easier to misdirect people in person. So then, you come back the same way as you did, like that, just to make sure you don't show the bottom. And you place it over, and then you, at the last minute you say, oh, wait, no, the coin wasn't supposed to disappear. Uh, I think it was supposed to go through the table. So in three seconds, no, nah, that's not right either. Um, oh, I know what it was, the salt shaker was supposed to go through the table. Okay, so you say it sort of like that, like you really say it convincingly. And the moment you, after, the moment after you say that, oh, the salt shaker was supposed to go through the table. And then, don't give them too much time to think after that statement. Your hand comes straight down, your other hand moves out. Temper and just for a second, they see your right hand empty. Go under the table, grab the salt shaker on your way to the middle of the table. So when your right hand is on the way to the middle of the table, you want to grab the salt shaker. You don't want to stop in your lap and then tap it on the table from underneath. So pretend the salt shaker is in my lap. As your hand goes under the table, this is your lap. Your hand grabs the salt shaker and goes right under the lap without any hesitation. So it should look like the salt shaker comes close from closer from um, the center of the table. So it's like this. Salt shaker's on the lap. You just slapped your hand. You show your hand empty just briefly. Don't say it's empty, just show it. And then, don't even look at your lap. Don't look down. Just, you'll feel it go right underneath tap the bottom of the table with a salt shaker, and then come up like that. And then that's the basically the end. All right, and I'll have some close-ups, so it'll be a lot easier to see. Just remember the psychology of this trick. Psychology and magic is very important. Also, if you are a beginning magician, try to think of something you know more creative than what I said with this trick. You could frame it as, you know, magicians do the impossible all the time, but maybe you could come up with a story. Be creative. Uh, my grandfather showed me this old coin, in fact, you can use a really ancient coin, or you can use one that looks old, and pull it out of your pocket and say, you know, my grandfather had this good luck coin, and he claimed that if the temperature were just right, it would disappear, or whatever, you know, come up with some creative patter, P-A-T-T-E-R. Patter are, or patter is, 
uh, what the magician says with his trick. So come up with some creative patter for this trick, because it's worth it. And if you've never done this before, practice as many times as you can, and then rehearse it in front of a video camera so you can see the misdirection, and go over this video several times so you can see what the visual, uh, what the misdirection is and the timing, because those are everything. If you have any questions, please email me at tom at intervalmagic.com. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for watching and or listening to this Interval of Magic. If you enjoyed it and want to see more like it, along with a variety of other great magic-related content, please help support my work in one of two ways. Follow and endorse me on rockfin.com slash intervalmagic, or become a Patreon patron at patreon.com slash tominterval. Also, please like and share this, subscribe to my Interval Magic YouTube channel, and follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at Interval Magic. Until then, may your intervals be happy, peaceful, and magical. Music